Hey, what's up, Average Joes? Today, I want to finally talk to you about The Black Company. So if you watch my channel for a little bit, then you'll know that back in June, I started The Black Company, Chronicles of the Black Company. And it's been on my list for a very, very, very long time. Uh, ever since I even first got into fantasy, it was one of the first series that I added. And so I finally wanted to make myself uh, actually start the series. And it is way different than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I believe it is a like a nine or 10 book series, but they're, they're, they're fairly small, 270 to 300 pages or so. Um, they're in four different um, omnibus bindings. So today, I'm just going to talk about the books of the North because that's all I've read so far. So that is the first three books and it is contained with the books of the North um, and is just set with the, um, the group that is from, um, from the North with the black company. So this is going to be, this is going to be spoiler free. And even if you're, if you're somebody that doesn't like to know anything about any books going in, going in blind, I highly recommend you watch this just because going in blind with this story can be very bad and not knowing and you, you're this is the book one is very confusing basically um and i'm gonna explain some things about it and it's gonna it'll help you if you're just starting it because it is a very confusing start and it's a very rough start there was a it, we started this as like a read-along with several people on mike's discord and a lot of people dropped off during or after book one because the writing style and how confusing it was but it gets better after that so the black company quick rundown the black company is a like a very formal um group of mercenaries it's like a, a company of mercenaries it's almost like its own little mercenary faction of you know it's just probably a couple steps shy of being an actual army they have the hierarchy they have a ranking they have rules um they have dedicated positions and it's quite large um, in scope. You find out after a while that it's, you know, it's a couple hundred people. It's been going on for hundreds or thousands of years. So Black Company is this actual like formal organization, but they're essentially mercenaries. And they get hired to go fight, fight wars for people or do certain missions for people. And there is a war going on between the rebels and these, basically the Black Company and um, the magical people in this in this uh world so you start off so that's like the basic premise which by the way you're not even told much about what the black company is you ha- i, I kind of just had to guess that they're mercenaries and you're not even explained to how they're mercenaries and the dynamics of how they fit into this world um at first when i was going into i thought it was just gonna be like a small group of people like a pirate ship of people but it's actually like a quite large company and so that's the dynamics of it which you're not told that much of so getting into book one and the main confusing start is book one is written as basically journal entries or a, a, a diary. Um, they are the annals and is from the perspective of the analyst Croker, who is also the physician for the black company, or at least the, the regiment, the, the group that he's with. So he is completely in charge of the annals of the black company. And this is passed down um, through the black company. And it is a very, very important position because they have to chronicle all of what they do. And that is one of the most coveted things that they actually carry around and keep protected are the annals to make sure that all of their history is saved. He has read it all and he, he knows a lot about it. And so that is his job to keep the annals. And all of book one, you are reading his entries in the annals, but you are not told this at all. You are, you, you kind of become aware that it is first person in, from Croker's view, but like a weird kind of first person. Cause it's like, you know, he's writing from his perspective, but there's not like classic first person, like it's thoughts going on in their head. It is what, whatever he's writing down. And because of that, a lot is omitted. So in normal first person, you hear their thoughts and the backgrounds and what's going on. And you'll get explanations of stuff And for croakers for as you're, as he's writing his annals, he's not going to write down common sense thing that the world knows that his comrades know that he knows. So very little is explained of who is, who is who, what is what, what the dynamic is of the world, what's actually going on. So for the first third to first half of the book, you're very confused as to what's going on. You're not even told that you're writing in the annals, that you're reading from the annals until later on in the book. It would have been such an easy thing to just been like, while while he was writing, it would have been naturally like, yeah, I will 
while dictating this in these annals, like acknowledging that these are the annals that they are reading from. Uh, but that, that didn't happen. So you just kind of have to figure it out. So you're very confused. A lot of things are much glossed over and he'll use terms that like he knows and it's normal in the world, but like, you don't know, and you have to put the pieces together. So it's, it's like putting a puzzle together in the dark, kind of, you're just kind of going by feel and seeing what fits together. And eventually you get something out of it. Um, so that is the book one. And I think that that definitely deters a lot of people and it did. And I was just looking up reviews and that really deterred a lot of people. Um, a lot of people feel that it is the weakest of the books and it comes with a big disclaimer. I think book one needs like, if I don't even know if Glenn Cook is still alive or whoever's in charge of it, but I think it needs like a prologue novella to just explain to you the world. And then you go into the annals. I know that might, might, defeat some of the purpose of it i think glenn cook was kind of going for that sort of mysticism confusion mystery to it and i guess this is one of the things that steven erickson pulled from the black company to inspire part of malazan because i've heard malazan is very complicated and very confusing it does not hold your hand well that definitely happens in book one for the black company and i found it very annoying i don't like being confused on purpose being left in the dark on purpose it's one thing to have mystery it's one thing to to treat your readers with intelligence and have them figure it out and not spoon feed them or be repetitive with how you're explaining, but you are completely left in the dark for no reason for a lot of these things. And it just makes everybody super confused on book one. And it also goes through, it's also not really a linear plot. It's kind of a lot of setup for basically the last third of the book. So they have like early missions and then a couple of missions here and there, and you're slowly introduced to some of the um, magical characters in, in this book, the, uh, the, the, the Taken. The Taken are like the, there's like, I think nine of these magical characters that uh, have been around for you know, a thousand or so years. And they're kind of the generals, you could say, of the, the army that's, that's going up against the rebels. They're sort of in charge and they have, are in direct communication with the lady who is the actual leader and ruler and high supreme magical being of the world. And uh, Croker has an infatuation with the lady, but nobody ever meets or goes to see her because of how, you know, well, how mystic she is, I guess. I don't know. But they have, he, he lays out some, you know, there's times where some of the Taken will be assigned to the Black Company to help them with their mission or guide them with their mission, help them with what they're doing. And they'll use their abilities, which are ranging into all different kinds of things. Um, they're basically undead but they, they, they can die, but they're basically corpses in a way. Like they're, some, they're pretty deformed in their own way. It kind of has to do with how they died previously. I think the Taken when like they, they, they were created at some point, but anyway, so you're, you're totally introduced to some of the Taken, some of the worlds, you're, you'll meet a couple of new characters along the way. You get to pick up and meet um, Raven and Darling and some others that build a character that, that help for the entire trilogy. So that's a lot of the setup and you're just reading from the annals from Croker's point of view. And then toward the end, there's a huge battle between the rebels and uh, the black company and the taken and all of them. So that is book one. And there's no really any, no spoilers there. Uh, just knowing that the annals are what you're reading from book two, really, really, really big improvement. It's probably my favorite of the trilogy. I think a lot of people really like it and the perspective changes. So I think in book one, it's like the very um, confusing annals. And in book two, you get, it's almost like third person. Well, not, not quite third person for Croker, but whatever you're reading from Croker, I think it's the annals. They read much more better. They read, and maybe it's because you know the world better as well, but he writes a lot more clear. I don't know if Glenn Cook was just improving in his, his first person annals type writing style, but it was much more clear in book two from Coker's POV. I didn't feel myself nearly as confused or even at all. But also they have a second POV, which is the uh, third person POV, third person point of view of Shed, which was an innkeeper in this town that they go to. And having that dual perspective was really, really good. And you can see them from different lights and their different experiences and what's going on. Shed's story and what he goes through and um, how he all the stuff that he gets into and how he um, weaves together with Croker are, was really great to see. And then seeing Croker in a different point of view 
and what he's doing and how he's coming into his own uh, role and um, hierarchies changing and how his views toward the Taken and the Lady and all these things are evolving as they go along. So that was really awesome to see. I think that was the best book uh, being in that town. And again, there's there's a battle at the end, but it's not like as quite of an epic scale. But it's either way that you it's one actual story build up the entire time. It's not these little ones and then like a battle at the end. It's it felt very, very satisfying um, toward the end of that book and the payoff and then leading into the third book. And uh, so that's yeah, the second book is probably the best one, uh, probably because of the different POVs and how clear it was. The third book is mostly from Croker's point of view again. And then um, and then you get like this time jumping. He he's now so now you're still getting the annals from Croker and, and what he's doing, if he's still writing them, or it's just third person from or uh, first person from Croker's point of view. But then you get like time jumps backwards because he's discovering journals of something else. And he, and you'll go and like he'll he'll get a, a letter, somebody will drop off a letter or, or some envelopes for him. And it's and then you'll go to the next chapter. And it's him reading this thing from, you know, hundreds of years ago or whatever it was, hundreds of thousands of years ago. And that I wasn't really a fan of. Like there was that that went on way, probably way too much than it should have. They do come up with important details, but I, it, it took me out of the story completely. I think it could have been summarized a lot, a lot shorter. M most of what's your he's reading and going jumping back to um, wasn't really necessary. But I think it's just another writing and plot device that Glenn Cook wanted to use. So at this point, you have now like Croker's annals that he wrote from and is just book one. Book two is kind of a mix between a first person and a third person point of view. And then book three is back to like a third person and an annals type point of view. So he was really playing. Glenn Cook was really, I guess, got kind of got creative with his storytelling and different ways he was trying to do it. And some of it was executed very well. Some of it was not executed so well. And you, there's a lot of confusing parts. So that is definitely something to know. So um, yeah, the the cl clarity of the story is kind of the biggest drawback, but I did still really, really like it. I did still find myself wanting to be in this world, wanting to find out more about these creatures and like the magic slowly escalates until it gets to book three. Then it, like really takes a spike up of the sort of, magic and the creatures and everything going how crazy the world gets and it it, it got a little, a little ridiculous in book three but that also became explained and i just think it was the ending of the entire first trilogy of the first three books was very good because it's almost its own self-contained story before you go into i guess the books of the south which i have not gotten gotten into yet so i i have no idea how they they relate but um it was very well done uh, for for the most part of the overarching story and it is i think it is worth it if you're going to start it plan to read the first three get the omnibus and read the first three i think in total it was like 800 or so pages um does not read that fast because it is a little bit confusing and you have to kind of take your time with it so even even a, it was even as a 270 page book it was probably reading as i would probably read it as fast as i would like a 400 page book because i knew i had to take my time to actually like digest what is happening because there is no hand holding. Um, but I also found that I really like Croker a lot. Croker is probably one of my favorite characters in fantasy now. Uh, and I know a lot of people, I think Alan um, from Library of Alan Gendry also really loved Croker as well. And I just think he's really, really great. Um, you're, you're in his head and his perspective and his, and his uh, annals the entire time. So you kind of hope to like him, but He's very, he's very new. He's very, uh, he's a very refreshing character because he is in a position of power, but he doesn't abuse power. And there's even times where he should be in charge, but he just doesn't, he doesn't say, say anything. He doesn't raise his voice. He's just kind of along for the ride. At times he just kind of wants to be an every man and wants to be left alone, but he's put into this, into these roles of responsibility and he, and to be a decision maker. And he's just like, man, I'm just the analyst. I'm just the doctor. I shouldn't be doing this. So-and-so should be here doing this. And He's a bit ornery at times and a bit sassy, which is great. Um, I also love that he has inside jokes with himself. And since you're in his head, you're, you're sharing those inside jokes. But he, had, but the, the inside jokes he has with himself about his comrades are pretty awesome and uh, very enjoyable. His comrades like One-Eye and Goblin are also fantastic. And their dynamic is, it's strange, it's weird, it's funny, it's charming. All of these things uh, between One-Eye and Goblin. 
uh, I, I, I liked a lot. Some of the other characters, some of like lieutenants and sergeants that are around that you kind of get doses of, you don't get to know as well. Um, Silent was great for, for being up for someone who doesn't talk. Silent was a very good character. Uh, added, added a lot of things. Um, so yeah, and they have a captain. He, he chimes in and, and they talk about him as well. And it's, it's very it's a very militaristic feel, I, be, I believe, because Glenn Cook was in the military. So you have that hierarchy dynamic and, you know, following orders, how they should be done, you know, whatever the hierarchy is. But then like when their superiors aren't around, just kind of talking about him here, they're bad mouthing him here and there and questioning things, but they're still soldiers. So they're still going to do what they need to do. Um, so that is very, very military um, influenced. And in a way it's very abnormal yet classic fantasy because they have a lot of classic fantasy things. They have wizards, uh, they have these mythical beings, but it's also very abnormal because there's new twists on all of these things. And um, when the wizards might do magic, a lot, a lot of times it's just like it's fake magic. It's just like an illusion that j- just uses to scare people, and they do that a lot. Uh, and then there's also real magic that actually does some, some crazy stuff. Um, the creatures can be varying in degrees of ridiculous or just like mediocre. So um, there's also a a lot of political intrigue and maneuvering aspects to it, especially, you know, book one and two, there's a lot of political maneuvering um, and like things don't seem as they are, as they, and not everything as, is as they seem. Um, there's suspect suspicion of treachery and uh, all these things. And like some people think that, yeah, there's, there's a lot of mistrust and, and, and things going on. So that was also uh, good as well because they're trying to figure out what's actually going on, whose sides on whose, um, how things are going to play out, uh, who's switching sides, all of this stuff, uh, because there's basically just two sides of this war uh, going on. Um, so yeah, there. If you can get past the annals and the confusing in the beginning and just kind of push through book one and get into book two, I think it'll be worth it. You'll get enough into book one to have like breadcrumbs of. Uh, of the world and the people and a, a brief overview. It's almost like you got an incomplete story and then you're getting into the actual story is kind of what I want to say, how book one into book two goes. Um, the perspective changes might throw people off as well. Like I said, they change between the books, but it makes it very different. If you wanted something that is very, very unique in the fantasy and like darker type fantasy genre, I think this would be really, really good. Um, as of right now, I will recommend it. Although there's a lot of bumps in the road, I plan on continuing it because I already own the, the books of the South and there's enough to want to make me go back to the world and see how everything ties together. I, uh, you know, with, with this three books being just the books of the North, I'm interested to see how it ties into the books of the South and the other, um, all the other books in the series. So the, the world can only get bigger from here, which I think is going to be very interesting. And I wonder and hope that, you know, Glenn Cook's writing style becomes a little more clear as you go along. I know there's going to be up and down books here and there, slow ones or ones that just don't matter. So I'm pretty prepared for that. You know, at least I'm mentally prepared for this. And that's why I wanted to get all this out because if you go into this blind thinking, you're just getting a, a dark fantasy series and like epic fantasy, then you might be disappointed and you might even DNF the first book. So hopefully this helps um, get, get you into it. You know, hopefully this helps if you, if you were thinking about it on your radar, this is definitely something that has a big asterisk and caveat, but knowing that going into it, I think would help. Um, yeah. Chronicles of the Black Company. I think it is very good. And I think it, it's one of those series that will have payoff at the end. It's not just like everything is so good in each moment. It's like, there's going to be ups and downs moments there's going to be bad times. There's going to be good times. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it will be a series that pays off. Um, I just wish there wasn't so much confusion. So we'll see how it is going forward. Uh, but a good, very good ending to book three as well. Uh, I thought it was very satisfying for considering everything that, that, that went on and uh, all of the somewhat confusion. But that is my thoughts on the Books of the North for the Chronicles of the Black Company. Uh, hopefully you might be you know, if it's on, if it's on your list, hopefully this will push you to maybe even try it out. You can get the, the, the omnibus for like $9 or something of the first three books on Kindle and maybe even the physical editions. I'm not even sure I'm reading it on Kindle. 
So let me know if Black Company is on your radar, if you're thinking about getting into it. Um, if you have any other questions, I, did, I tried not to give away too much. I just wanted to pin an overarching, um, not quite review, my thoughts on it and some caveats to getting into it. So that's on your list. If you have any questions, let me know. Or if you have read it, let me know what you think about, you know, my thoughts or what are your thoughts toward the Black Company and how you felt toward the books of the North. And I'll see you in another video. Thank you.